Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Dr. Johnson was handed over to the state medical board and his license to practice medicine was revoked. The second story. Supervisor changes roster the night before and expects me to show up. The third story. Corporate BS tried to stop my vacation, so I called their bluff taking sick days till they decided to just give me a vacation. And the first story is, Dr. Johnson got a new computer. I've been working in IT for 15 years now, and I've yet to find anything that tops this. I work for a small shop, three employees, but we service multiple companies in the area, a number of those companies being doctor's offices. At one of the doctor's offices we serviced they had a policy when changing machines out for upgrades that only relevant information was transferred to new systems and to remove anything you did not want IT to go through on the machine before it was replaced. Confidential patient data was secured on the servers and not on the local machines, so this was a way of purging unneeded old Word documents and cat memes that had been saved. It was also policy to ensure nothing that there was nothing on these machines that should not be there, like say using your work equipment for adult entertainment. It was Dr. Johnson's turn to have his machine upgraded to a brand new one after his old machine had been in service for about three years. We informed him a week prior that we'd be changing his machine in a week and scheduled to do so on a day when he was not in the office and sent him a copy of the practice's policy for equipment changes. In most cases, there is nothing remotely interesting or strange about doing these transfers. The most we noticed over the year was that people seemed to collect a whole lot of garbage downloads from the internet that are not needed anymore, and some Word and Excel documents that were archived off to cold storage and not moved to the new machines unless they had been accessed in the last six months, unless requested otherwise. The day came for the transfer. I showed up at the office, started to get an idea of how much data we needed to move on. As usual for most people in this office, Dr. Johnson left a post-it note on his keyboard, saying he never had time to go through anything and for us to handle it. I opened File Explorer, browsed to his profile path, Right-click it to find the folder size, 347 gigabytes of data, which seemed extreme. I started going checking the folders in the profile, and 297 gigabytes of this data was on the desktop. I drilled down further until I find the culprit, a folder on the desktop named Fun Stuff. Thinking it was the install for some game or another, I opened the folder. To this day, I still wish I had not. I was greeted by several thousand high-resolution images of Dr. Johnson in his office yanking it. Oddly, a number of these were also animated and there were video files. I did not dare look at these, and even some bizarre shots from under his desk and from the mirror behind him, a possible patient in the room. I locked the screen and went to the head of the practice to discuss what I had just found, who could not believe someone who was in the process of becoming a partner in the practice would be doing this with company equipment. I showed him the images, to which he took out his phone and called the other two partners into the office to come over. They thanked me and asked me to pull the machine and not transfer anything, and to put the old computer in one of their offices. I installed the new machine. I got some medical gloves before touching anything, set up all the applications, and left the office for them to handle it internally. The next day after Dr. Johnson had come back to work, I guess things did not go over well with the others at the practice. He called our office, demanded he talk to me and started to yell at me over the phone about what an invasion of his privacy I had committed, that he planned to sue me personally over it, that I had cost him his chance at becoming a partner at the practice, his position in the practice, and apparently his wife because she was good friends with the wife of the head of the office, and I guess gossip happened. When he was done yelling, I asked him calmly if he had anything else to say. I reminded him our office records all calls in and out, then asked him three questions. Did he receive the email explaining the process of replacing his machine per his own company policy? That we would be sorting relevant and non-relevant data, and anything he did not want us to see he would have to deal with on his own ahead of time? He had replied to this very email that he would try and go through stuff if he found time. Answer? Yes. Did he remember leaving the note on his keyboard saying he didn't bother to do any cleanup and for us to do it? Answer, yes. Which did he think would go over better? Him shutting up, dealing with the problems he created himself by being a disturbing person to be a doctor, or trying to sue me personally for following his practice's policy and having all the details made public. After I asked this question, he hung up the phone. All the other doctors in the office started to refer to him as Dr. Spanky or Dr. Feelgood. Last I heard they turned him into the state medical board and he lost his license to practice medicine, was divorced and was under a criminal investigation within a few months of this happening. 
I lost track of it all when we distanced ourselves from that medical practice for several unrelated reasons. Mostly they love to order things and then try to take as long as possible to pay for them. I feel weird enough when I use my work computer to google synonyms, or to put a work related meme on our team meetings to boost morale. And here the guy made it worse. Thank goodness you followed procedure and got rid of the creepy weirdo who needs therapy. I can't understand the thought process of people, including this guy, who spend years if not decades of their lives, and tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, accumulating the education and experience needed for some of these high end jobs, only to drop it all for such nonsense. It's insanely stupid and irresponsible. I used to change computers too. I had someone who used their work computers for 21 plus videos. I was a little embarrassed and warned the owner of the computer about it. He was embarrassed and then we just laughed about it. I don't think anything came of it. It was a misuse of resources, but not as bad as your story. The next story is… Sure, I'll come in on my day off work and make everyone stay late. I used to work in a factory that would shut down and be completely cleaned every weekend. Only two people were needed for this, and they only had to supervise and help the hired cleaning company. At the time I had a boyfriend living two hours from me, and every weekend I would take the train to see him. My supervisor knew this as it came up in casual conversation before. On Friday I checked the roster, hung in the break room. I was not scheduled for cleaning duties this weekend, so I could go to my boyfriend. Happy coincidence, I made a photo of the roster to send to a coworker, since she forgot to check it and had already left for the day. On Saturday morning I got a call from the supervisor. S. Where are you? Me. What? S. You're supposed to be here. You're scheduled to work. Me. No, my name wasn't on the roster yesterday. S. Well I put it on there yesterday evening. You're supposed to check it before you leave. Me. I had the morning shift. How can I check the roster in the evening? S. You should ask a coworker to check it for you. Now get over here. Me. I'm in town two hours away and you called me out of bed. S. I don't care how long it takes. You are scheduled for today so you're working today. Me. Fine. I'll be there ASAP. I love the pay. Saturday was overtime so extra pay. So I got dressed, took a shower and hopped on the train. From the train station to the factory is another half hour. So I got there about three hours after cleaning duties were supposed to begin and everyone had to stay three hours longer than usual. Double overtime. The cleaning crew didn't mind since they got paid extra too. The other coworker wasn't too thrilled, understandably, but he knew how unreasonable the supervisor could be. As for the supervisor herself, when I arrived, S. Finally, what took you so long? Me. Like I said on the phone, I wasn't exactly close. S. Next time just check the D roster. Me. I did. I even have a photo of the roster on Friday at 1pm. Pulls out phone and as you can see I was not on it. Don't try to blame me for this. I was pretty peeved at her behavior at this time. S. We'll see how the boss thinks about your work ethics. Me. I'll show him the photo. According to my contract, my roster is supposed to be communicated to me two weeks beforehand. That shut her up for the day. We all got paid heavily. The cleaning crew got paid to sit around and drink coffee for three hours. And the next morning I found out what happened with the roster on Friday. Apparently another coworker had told the supervisor that she wouldn't be able to work for a week, the week of the incident, due to surgery on her arm. She had told her a month before. S being not so bright, thought the coworker could just come in on Saturday since it was only to watch if the cleaning crew were doing everything correctly and not stealing anything. The coworker upon seeing her name on the roster, clarified in no uncertain terms that she would not be working due to potentially very heavy pain. This shouldn't be a problem since there were about 10 people who could work in her stead. But no, S decided instead of asking for a volunteer, she would wait until the day before and just write a name on the roster and hope that they had no plans and noticed their name on the roster. S got a reprimand and the cleaning crew had a great laugh and a nice paycheck, and so did I. You came to work when you weren't needed and it cost the company. They had to pay everyone a bunch of overtime. Haha, <laughs> good job OP. At my first job I had a manager who kept changing the schedule. I don't know why he did it, but he seemed to enjoy making people uncomfortable. One day I was checking the schedule at the end of my shift on Friday, since I had Saturday off, and Sunday was my day off the next week. Unfortunately the store allowed changes to the schedule until 2 o'clock p.m. Saturday. I also had a morning shift, so I didn't see this change. My manager posted a new schedule where I work on Sunday. I called the manager and explained that this was some kind of mistake. Then he told me, the mistake would be that you didn't show up for work. I refused and decided to quit the D job. I only had a month before I left for college, so I didn't lose anything. I found out later that my manager was in big trouble for trying to defraud the company. He took sick leave, but then moved to the other side of the country without letting them know. The last story is… 
Won't approve vacation time? That's cool. How about paid sick leave? From a medic in the pre-pandemic times. We do our scheduling two months in advance for work, since most people have multiple jobs, and EMS isn't the kind of job that you can just hang and be back in 15 minutes sign on the door. So after diligently working for my company for over a year, I finally wanted to use some of my vacation days I accrued. Issue was there's like eight levels of management, so it's hard to get things approved when we work overnights, and management works business hours. I asked my supervisor to approve some vacation time several months out. He says to try and trade shifts with an employee, so no one has to take actual time off. I don't care so long as I get my trip, so I book my flight and try to trade my shifts. Two months out from my flight, no one traded for my shifts, and my supervisor won't approve vacation time. So I talk to his boss, same story, try to get a shift trade, says he can't approve vacation time. I say I'm still going on my trip. One month out from the trip, no changes, supervisor and his boss can't approve my time. And at this point they say the schedule is set, and I'm stuck with my shift since no one would take a trade. So I call their boss, and she says it's too late to do anything about it. Two weeks till my flight, no coworker wanted to trade for my shifts. No manager three tiers up would approve vacation time. So I call our dispatch center and call out as if I was emergently sick, but two weeks advance notice. Legally dispatch can't ask questions, and the dispatcher just chuckled, realizing I was calling out sick in advance, and just pulled me off the schedule. Not three minutes later I get a phone call from the highest up manager I've ever spoken to. She says I can't call out sick three shifts in a row two weeks in advance. I'm like effing bet, what are you gonna do about it? I mention all my email correspondence with other manager, refusing to approve vacation time, and say I'm just gonna call out since I'm not being allowed to use my time. She drops a threat. Well if you call out three consecutive shifts, you'll need to go to occupational medicine and get approved to come back to work from a long illness. Without skipping a beat, I go, well, my flight back gets in real late Tuesday, so might as well put me off the Wednesday shift too, and make it an even four days, since I won't be able to get to OMS that day. We have a long, silent pause on the phone. Well, next time just call me first. I'll approve the vacation time. Don't worry about OMS, and don't miss that Wednesday shift. A nice little victory of mine against a giant healthcare corporation, since they wouldn't approve my vacation days, but they can't question my sick days if I'm willing to take them. Edit update. Same job just offered instantly approved overtime with a $100 bonus to anyone picking up a shift this week. I'm debating calling out on my own shift to try and pick up another shift for the bonus of $100. I'm sorry you had to go through all this. It's a horrible lack of accountability on the part of management for the downtime of a leave request. I work in a service station. I'm so lucky to work directly for the director of maintenance at my trucking company. The nicest guy in the world. That's the best boss I've ever had. When I had 12 surgeries, for an illness I won't talk about, a year a couple of years ago, I could tell him the night before, and he would just solve the problem. I cover for him without delay, and he does the same for me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.